The Lake Turkana Wind Power Project in Kenya aims to provide 300 megawatts of reliable low-cost wind power to the country's national grid. Now, this equates to approximately 20% of the current installed electricity generating capacity of the country. We now head over to Nairobi, where Carlo van Wageningen, uh, chairman of the Lake Turkana Wind Power Project, is uh, going to be giving us more detail on the project and what it means uh, for fuel and uh, power in the country. A uh, very good afternoon to you, Carlo. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Now, an interesting fact I found is that it's the biggest wind farm in the world. Uh, when you're looking at the number of turbines, at about 365 turbines, you're looking at capacity 300 megawatts. Uh, it's, a, it's a flagship project for renewable energy in Africa. It's a key power project for Kenya. Just give us a bit of background to the development of Lake Turkana. Well, I think since um, uh, the, the last time I, I, I was uh, here with you, um, uh, we, uh, we have today um, completed, let's say, the uh, development stage of the project, which means all our, contra all our studies are in place and approved and uh, all our licensing requirements for Kenya. Um, uh, both the uh, power purchase agreement is in place for the next 20 years. Uh, the uh, IPP license from the regulatory board uh, is uh, also uh, in place. And all our contracts are uh, firmed up for the various EPCs, APC contracts that we have. Um, and so uh, from our side, we would say we are ready to roll. Uh, of course, uh, we need the money. And uh, right now, uh, the, uh, um, our lead arranger, African Development Bank, who is doing a, a, an incredibly good job on, the, on this. This is a very complex project, and it's a complex project finance structure. Uh, they are uh, presently in London uh, with uh, some of our team as well, the Lake Tucano Wind Power team and some of our partners. And they are uh, actually uh, negotiating a term sheet uh, in order to uh, come to an agreed uh, um, banking conditions and loan conditions uh, and uh, we hope that process will uh, be completed uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks on the term sheet itself and that we can then move to start uh, preparing uh, loan agreements where, with uh, the lawyers and that we can effectively hope for a, um, a financial close by um, end of March, middle of April, uh, and that we can then break ground soon after that. Of course, the big gap is the financial gap right now. And uh, as you say, it's not a small sum of money. You're looking for 75 billion shillings, 300, uh, 582 million euros. Uh, where's this money likely to come from? Or who are the key financiers for the project? All right, we have 70% of it will be debt financed uh, and that will be, uh, come, like I said, it's being arranged by African Development Bank together with uh, Standard Bank uh, and uh, Ned Bank of uh, South Africa. Uh, they will then be bringing in and syndicating this, uh, this amount with various other um, uh, financial institutions, mainly DFIs. We hope to see uh, also uh, the European Investment Bank, uh, uh, the, the DEGs, the FMOs, uh, what I call the usual suspect of it. So a host of banking institutions, as you say, Standard Bank and Ned Bank in South Africa, tapping into that, uh, that market there in, in terms of renewable energy. We know that Standard Bank has been actively involved in the, in the carbon market in Kenya. Are you hoping to sell, uh, are you hoping to access the carbon market through this project? Well, uh, as you know, we are, we are a, a registered project with the UNFCCC and uh, uh, we are looking at potentially uh, 750,000 uh, um, uh, certificate CERs that we hope to earn on a yearly basis on this project. Uh, but uh, our agreement, uh, as per our power purchase agreement, is that we, are, we will be returning the bulk uh, of this or most of this uh, um, uh, uh, earning back to Kenya uh, and uh, we have agreed with uh, the Minister of Finance and Ministry of Energy in Kenya that that amount and that money will be devoted to the uh, development of the communities uh, within the, um, uh, the, the power generation where the power generation will, uh, will take place and to the communities along the 428 kilometers of the transmission line. And of course, the cost of this wind energy is quite competitive. You compare it to other energy sources in the country. Just give us an idea of the type of cost that we'll be looking at once production uh, takes place. 
Okay, if uh, um, we have agreed a tariff of uh, 7.52 uh, euro cents uh, per kilowatt hour uh, with, uh, with uh, Kenya Power, and uh, that actually already, just, just on the Kenyan market on wind energy, the uh, feed-in tariff in Kenya for wind is actually 12 US cents. Now, if you take uh, uh, 7.52 euro cents, that converts to roughly, I think, right now uh, to about 9.1, 9.2 uh, US cents. So you can see we are, we are uh, really uh, heavily below the, uh, even the feed-in tariff offered for wind uh, in Kenya, and that makes us actually very proud. I would say on a general uh, basis, the uh, tariff that we offer on our project is probably uh, uh, one of, if not the cheapest uh, wind uh, power tariff in the world. That is impressive, um, you know, of course, given that the fact that uh, wind energy and renewable energy has been prohibitively expensive. Uh, what is this project going to mean for, for Kenya? Of course, energy demand is high, it's set to grow as the economy grows. Just give us the benefits that you see uh, Takana having for the, for the country. Well, first of all, I think what it's doing, it's, it's, it's really opening. Uh, first of all, it's, it's showing that you can uh, build or you can set up and, and conclude a project of this size. Like you said uh, earlier on, it is a, it is a very large uh, capital investment. It's entirely a private investment, uh, the largest of its kind in Kenya ever, and uh, as, a, as a private investment, of course. And this, I think, will send a message out to investors who are looking at this, kind, this emerging market and say, then it's really possible to do something of this kind and of this size. So that, that's number one. It, it really opens the possibilities for larger infrastructure investment projects, I hope. And uh, secondly, purely on the energy side, uh, we are, with this tariff, we, we represent, we, we're about 40 to 45 percent cheaper than the average uh, uh, power mix uh, cost in Kenya. Um, and uh, Kenya has incredibly good wind resources and we, we hope that this will spin off uh, more interest and more wind power to uh, eventually come on, uh, on, online uh, in Kenya and more wind power projects uh, because the demand in Kenya for energy is growing so rapidly, uh, the economy is expanding and as we know energy is a key factor in, uh, in, uh, in the economic development of any country. Yeah, let's, let's talk about generally uh, the renewable energy sector right now and where it stands in light of the fact that we've got the slowing global uh, economy and the concerns around, of course, what's taking place in Europe. As always, the IMF is meeting today to discuss boosting the war chest of the IMF to, to deal with the repercussions of the Eurozone fallout. And now the focus is shifting back onto to economic growth, back onto Europe. What does this mean for green financing in Africa? Africa. Well, I think uh, that for the moment, uh, the pledges that have been made in the past, before even before the crisis, uh, uh, and commitments taken towards Africa for infrastructural projects and uh, such as such as uh, energy, and in particular renewable energy, are very high. And uh, I don't think that there is uh, an intention to uh, withdraw. Uh, the commitments already taken uh, and there, there haven't been enough projects that have materialized yet under these funding so there is there is considerable amount still remaining uh, and therefore uh, the ability of uh, financing further from the uh, existing commitments. So you're not concerned uh, Carlo? No, I'm not very concerned. I'm uh, probably more concerned for the for the future, for the inc for increasing these amounts later. And I think it is very, very important that uh, new project developers in this sector uh, be, they, they must become very innovative, uh, find ways of tapping on local uh, resources, on uh, on equity, uh, and uh, you have to be inventive. Uh, obviously, the traditional forms of financing may uh, um, get a hit, but I think it, it, it's very much dependent on the project developers, on the way they will be able to um, uh, face the storm and find, and probably what it will do is push for renewed forms yeah. of, and, and renewed ideas on how to go about financing. I think 
we are uh, very often too reliant on external financing when we know that the economies here in Africa are growing, in Kenya, in, in, in your own country, in South Africa, uh, and there is a lot of cash available. It's a question of knowing how to tap it and knowing how uh, to give the comfort to those kind of investors to uh, 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 give them an appetite to well, invest in these kind of projects which are perceived as uh, initially as, uh, as high risk uh, capital.